fam. So if you spend any time in the fitness world, in the gym, around friends who work out, you're probably going to hear something about protein powder and the need for protein shakes and um, maybe you're totally entrenched in that world and just trying to figure out what works best for you. Maybe you don't know really what that means at all. So in this video, I want to help you figure out what does protein powder do, when should you take it, and what are some of the best ones to try. Protein powder comes in a variety of forms. You can get whey protein powder, you can get casein protein powder, you can get pea protein, brown rice protein, all hemp protein, all kinds of vegetarian proteins like that. Um, you can get proteins made out of beef, out of all kinds of stuff. So there's a ton on the market um, and they're not really that regulated. So the ingredients that go into them can be this huge long list of things that are hard to understand or they can be pretty simple and basic. Some taste horrible, some taste great. Uh, you can use it almost like, a, almost like a milkshake. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go into the details of what all those different proteins do, what they're like, all of that stuff. I just kind of want to break it down to the basics of what I tend to tell my clients, what I've found, what I've researched, what I've tasted, and just narrow it down to a few simple options. So if you're going to use protein powder, uh, these are the reasons why you should. One, it really helps to build muscle mass and to spare your muscle. Um, it's really important to get in a lot of protein after you work out as well as throughout the day. And so protein is something that you want to have right after a workout. The benefit of something like a protein shake is that it gets digested very quickly. Uh, so it's going to help replenish your muscle very quickly, especially when you're combining it with carbohydrates, which is what you want to do after you work out in order to replace glycogen in your muscle stores, get more amino acids to help with protein synthesis after you work out. And essentially what that all just comes down to is repairing muscle and building muscle. That's basically what it's used for. It's also great for meal replacements. If you like don't have time to pack a meal and you just want to do a protein shake as a snack during the day, then that's a great option. I don't recommend doing multiple protein shakes a day. Some people might do one pre-workout and one post-workout. Better for people who are really trying to build size and muscle. Um, but otherwise, it is still a processed food. And so I don't typically, I will do about one a day after a workout. And that's when I say workout, I mean a muscle building, weight lifting workout, not a cardio workout. It's not really necessary after that, unless you just need food and that's all you have with you. Um, but I would try to keep it to about one a day if that um, just because it is still a processed food, it's it's broken down proteins um, that go through a chemical process. So for that reason, I wouldn't use it too much, um, but they are very helpful in keeping you full and sati satiated and keeping, uh, keeping uh, eating enough protein uh, and, and helping to build muscle uh, post-workout and throughout the day to help keep that protein synthesis going. And as I mentioned, for a lot of people, uh, you may not be able to get in enough protein. Some people are vegetarian, some people just don't eat enough protein throughout the day. So if you're really trying to get in enough protein, protein shakes are a great way to do that. Um, most people need, mm, the what people say about how much protein you need varies. So I'm not gonna get super into that in this video but some people say a gram per pound of body weight. I wouldn't go that high, but some people are as low as like half a, a, a half a gram per pound of body weight, which is probably a little low. So I'll just give you my example. I'm currently around 125 pounds. I probably eat about 115 grams of protein a day. Uh, that's not necessarily needed. I could probably eat as low as 80 grams a day, but I also just really like protein. Most of my diet consists of protein. Um, but you want probably uh, more than half your body weight uh, in grams of protein to be ingested a day. So if that's hard for you, a protein shake is a great way to do that. Um, protein shakes can also be a great like snack meal replacement or a dessert option. Like you can combine it with milk and ice and other flavors and it can taste like a milkshake if you're craving something like that at the end of the day. So sometimes I use it for that if I'm maybe craving ice cream or you know something like a milkshake. So that kind of covers the basics of what protein powder is for and when you want to use it. 
One other addition I'll say is that a lot of people like to have it, I found in the mornings. If they're in a hurry, then they like to have a protein shake in the morning, just as kind of a way to get some food in, especially if they're coming to a workout early in the morning. Uh, some of my clients will do that to get some nutrients in without feeling too full or bloated. So that's another great option. It's just kind of a quick meal. Um, some protein powders are great for that or post-workout because they also have carbohydrates in them. Some are just completely protein. Uh, I try to keep about two types on hand, and that is one that's just completely protein, like whey isolate, and then the one that has some carbs that I'll typically have after a workout so I can get some carbohydrates in with that protein. Um, as far as the types of protein powder go, I would say go with 100% whey isolate or some sort of organic protein powder, maybe a vegan type. The reasons I say that is that um, I've researched and heard a little bit more about casein protein lately and it seems to have some tie-ins with uh, causing cancer, it tends to operate like a carcinogen in your body. I am no expert on casein so that's just kind of what I've heard and just because of the little bit of kind of scary info I've heard about it, I've decided to get rid of protein powders that have that in it. And they typically make protein powders taste thicker and a lot tastier, I would say, and they can be better for baking. So it's kind of a bummer. If you want to have it, you can have it, but I've just realized there's some health concerns with it, and so I've started to avoid that. Um, pro whey protein isolate is a much better, more pure form of protein powder versus concentrate. So I will typically look at labels on a protein powder and see what the first few ingredients are. I'm okay with it having whey protein concentrate in it if the first ingredient is whey protein isolate. But I like to keep the ingredients very simple. Maybe it's just whey protein isolate, some guar gum or xanthan gum or something that helps thicken it up, and then something like uh, stevia or something, some kind of sweetener in there. Uh, other than that, if it gets into a really long list of ingredients, I pretty much avoid it because I don't even know what half those things are. Which is also why I like organic protein powders. Uh, because you know the ingredients are a lot healthier. Um, even with something like whey, you don't know, you know, those animals aren't being, you know, raised organically, and so there could be some health concerns with that also. So, uh, as far as my choices for protein, now that I no longer include casein, which is a bummer, some of my favorite tasting protein powders use that in it. So, I don't really use those too much anymore. So, some of the current ones that I'm using are uh, this Dimatize ISO 100. So I, I like Dimatize. I kind of trust them. I've seen a lot of great research from them at bodybuilding.com um, and they just seem to have good products. So I like this one because um, it's only a few ingredients, hydrolyzed whey protein isolate, whey protein isolate, natural and artificial flavors, which unfortunately everything's gonna have a little bit of that. Um, salt, uh, I won't read every single ingredient, but basically then it's like sucralose and stevia, so sweeteners. And then the last protein that I have is this Orgain Organic Protein. This is, I would have to say, my favorite. Um, and uh, this is a vegan protein, and I've tried a lot of vegan proteins, and most of them are just not very good. Like, I can drink them, but if I'm gonna be having protein shakes, which I, I don't get super excited about anyway, I want it to taste like a milkshake or something really good. Like I want it sweet, I want it to taste really good. I want a nice um, texture, like not too thick, not too thin. That's also why I like some of these. A lot of vegan proteins are pretty gritty and they can be really thick. Like you have to use a lot of water um, and then it kind of waters it down. And a lot of the flavors just are not that great. Like, it's doable, but it's just sort of like, ugh, choke it down versus, oh, it tastes really good. This is the only vegan protein I've had. It is vegan, right? It's at least vegetarian. I don't know if it's actually vegan, but it's organic. No lactose, no gluten, no soy, no dairy, no GMO. All those labor labels are on here. Anyways, this is the only organic uh, protein powder made of pea protein, rice protein, brown rice protein, uh, chia seed, and hemp protein. So this is not made of whey, this doesn't have lactose in it. Um, so typically anything that doesn't have whey or lactose in it, 
just doesn't taste very good. This is the only one I've had that legitimately tastes really good to me. Like I like it uh, better than most of the whey proteins I've had. Uh, it has a little bit of like an earthy taste to it, which I actually really like because it tastes more real and more natural. It doesn't taste quite as synthetic as a lot of protein powders do. Um, and again, I like that it's organic. Like everything in this is a lot healthier. I know that there's it's not coming from sources with uh, hormones and steroids and antibiotics and stuff like that. Um, this one is the chocolate fudge. They also have it in like pre-made. Uh, containers that's where I first found it and I really liked it so I bought the protein powder I didn't know if this would be as good because usually the pre-made containers are better um, but I like this just as much uh, and I like it better than the vanilla typically a lot of protein powders that are chocolate to me taste really fake like it's hard to replicate chocolate taste very well for some reason but this one is really good I just mix it again with coconut milk or almond milk um, but this one I usually do post-workout because this also has 150 calories, but it has 13 carbohydrates and 21 grams of protein. Um, so this has a little bit more carbs, which are good for post-workout. So a lot of times, like if I want to get something in my stomach before a workout in the morning, I might do like half a scoop of something like this. And then after my workout, I'll do something like this that has some carbohydrates in there too, to really help um, repair that glycogen after my workout and get protein in. So I hope that helps you. Um, it can get kind of pretty complicated. Workout nutrition, post-workout nutrition uh, can be difficult because everyone's needs are different and how your body responds to things are different. But that's kind of the basics. That's what I usually help my clients with is just get in a protein shake, make sure it's like 20 to 25 grams of protein, uh, and then get in some good healthy carbohydrates after you work out too. Try and stick with simple protein powders, organic protein powders, um, whey isolate protein powders, things that are pretty pure and don't have a lot of ingredients in there. And so far from the ones I've tasted and the ones that I've looked at in the ingredients, these are just ones that are working well for me. I hope that's helpful for you. I know that doesn't cover everything, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them below or contact me. Uh, if you have other tips or protein powders that you want to share in the comments with other people, that would be great. Please do so. If you have any other recommendations you want to give me, I'm always happy to try new things. Um, but I hope this is helpful to you. Thanks for watching and good luck with your workout and fitness journey.